Hey, it's Meg, welcome back to my channel. So today is the start of a new series on my channel. So I'm gonna be taking you along with me on a bit of an altered book adventure. So I found this old book in a charity shop from I think like the 80s or 90s. So it's not like vintage, but it's called A Gardener's Journal. And I mean, at first the cover, obviously, is absolutely stunning so that's what initially drew me to it but when i opened it up not only has it got illustrations within it but it is an actual journal that is made to be used when you are planning your garden and recording things of different plants when to plant things when to harvest things and it's got these like spaces to jot things down it's got these illustrations it's got different grid papers that i think would be really nice to work on so i think this is a really great base to use as a journal. I mean, just look at this. We've got like plain pages here. There's lines to write different things in. So this would be really great as like journaling spots. I think this is a really good base and it's a little bit shiny, but not too much. I think it's a really nice size. And I just love the illustrations throughout this book. Like where was this one? Like here, just all these lovely colored illustrations. My absolute favorite. We've even got black and white ones. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And what I thought I would do first is show you guys kind of the prep side of things. So I haven't really altered a book like this before for a journal. I always rip out the pages and then bind it into my own journal. But I know that when you're working in an altered book, the pressure on the spine, especially if you're going to do any collaging or anything like that, is quite intense as it fills up like the journal and as it gets bulky. So what I'm actually going to do is remove a few of the pages just so that we don't have too much pressure on the spine and that gives me some space to work with so some of the pages that I think maybe I won't necessarily use in this book but might be nice for ephemera elsewhere I'm going to remove them I'm no expert with this so please don't take this as a tutorial removing a page like this is a no-no because that's pretty integral so the spine here you can see that we have different signatures so you can see we've got different signatures so for example there's one signature so if I remove this page then the page on the other side here would also fall out so what I might do is actually trim them so that they are a little bit away from the spine just so that we lose the bulk but that I don't disrupt kind of the integrity of the book because obviously in doing this I don't want it to completely fall apart I'm just gonna go through and kind of earmark some pages that I think would be good for taking out so I don't mind this and I really want to keep this in here so I'm just going to look what's on the other side and I think this one might be quite good so I'm going to just fold it to about here so this is like maybe a centimeter half an inch I don't do inches I only do centimeters so I think it's about a centimeter and I am just going to oops gently pull this out so what I'm going to do is, because obviously that's a bit annoying, is I'm just going to glue that down and then maybe do some collage over it just so that you don't see that within the journal. So I'm just going to pop these to the side. So I'm not going to take out loads. I'm probably just going to do every other few pages, just ones that maybe aren't as interesting. So I also think maybe this one we can take out and then we can cut this out to use as ephemera or like collage at a later date. So I'm just gonna go through and take out a few of the pages just so that we have a little less bulk in this journal. out some pages and I think you can see if I just zoom in here so you can see here where my pages have been taken out and it's not that drastic but it has made the book slightly slimmer so that we have more room to grow should I want to add any collage to it and these are the pages that I have taken out now obviously because this is such a gorgeous book these will not be going to waste so I will definitely be using these possibly in this project if not in other journals but like I said we've got like lined papers we've got illustrations We've got all sorts of different things. I absolutely love this book. I definitely want to try and coffee dye this, but obviously I will have to do each page 
individually and then I will also glue down these little <laughs> little flaps that are left just for now and then I'll obviously come back and maybe if I need to collage them or um, disguise them in any way then I will but they're not that imposing so I'll probably just glue those down for now. <laughs> ready and prepped for altering so I'm just going to move this off to the side and I just want to test how this paper takes different paints and mediums especially if I want to be using paint on this so I'm just going to start off with some white acrylic which I know you're probably not going to be able to see but I just want to put it on as a bit of a base just to see how well things cover with paint. So I'm just going to take a bit of paint from the lid and just paint it on and maybe I might water it down a little bit just to get it moving on the page. Now obviously this paper is not made for doing, oops I've got it on the table, this paper isn't made for paint so you know you do have to test out and see what will work and it probably will buckle but you can always put it under something heavy like an old pile of books so you can see here if i wanted to go into this and just put some diluted watered down white paint you can see how we would then push the text back so if i was to add some pink paint this is the uh, paper artsy fresco finish chalk acrylic nothing too fancy so i'm just going to take a little bit of this on my paintbrush I'm literally just swatching just to see. Now this is quite opaque, so that's really nice. And you can see it covers the text, but you can see here they're pretty, they're pretty opaque. So I can really cover illustrations in this book if I wanted to, which a lot of them are really nice. So I'm probably not going to do that, but you can see here how just one layer of this paint has already got rid of quite a lot of that. My intention with this journal isn't to be really like painty and mixed media, but I would really love to just see what materials will work on this on this paper. So if you're going to be doing a altered book alongside with me, maybe for the month, then testing out your different paints and acrylics just to see what the paper reacts like, especially because we've had to take some out anyway. It's just a really great way of seeing how things work before you end up actually in the journal because we've all been there so it's definitely worth testing things out so i can see obviously acrylic it's pretty opaque anyway so it's pretty good for using on these pages and like i said i'm probably not going to be like covering pages with acrylic but you know i might give them maybe a faint layer on the background and then build them up we'll see so here i also have some watercolors so these are a mix of different watercolors so I've got Windsor and Newton ones I've got some handmade ones and I've also got Daniel Smith's as well so let me just move that here so I'm fully expecting this to maybe resist the watercolors a bit but we'll see so I'm just gonna grab maybe uh, this color here just so that it's nice and bright for you to see on camera and we will see how it reacts Okay, so it's not resisting as much as I thought it would. You're not going to get that nice watercolour look perhaps, but we will see. So I'm probably not going to use watercolour because this will probably... Oh, mind you, we'll see. This is the joy of testing things out and seeing what you like, what you don't. Because watercolour is going to react in a very similar way to if I was to do some coffee painting, which I kind of do want to do on these pages because... They're pretty aged, they're not like completely stark white, but I would like them to be a little bit more aged. Because obviously this book is only from 1990, I think, so it's not really old. I mean, it's older than me, but you know, it's not that old. So it's not had a chance to get those like lovely aged brown pages. We will see. This here is obviously the white paint that I put on at the start. So I could go over this book with white paint and then come in with the 
coffee that might work better than this and i also brought my gouache but i'm pretty confident that my gouache will sit on because my acrylic has obviously sat on quite nicely and gouache is just it's like a hybrid between acrylic and watercolor so if watercolor and acrylic had a baby that's gouache it's like it acts like watercolor in the sense that you can like dilute it down and re-wet it but it has like the opacity of, of uh, acrylic which I really like so I think if I want to do some painting in this journal then I might use gouache and then I get the best of both worlds so I'm just gonna put this mess off to the side so that it can dry and bring this journal back in so what I think I'm gonna do is I would really love to cover this center part of the cover because I'm not really keen on the image like I like the background but maybe if we cover the image on the front perhaps and then the back I'm not too bothered about at the moment but again we will probably want to cover the barcode and the like blurb and just keep this decorative pattern here this might get on my nerves so I might end up just cutting that off and then what I want to do as well is transform the inside covers because I mean as nice as green is that's a little bit boring okay so it's been a couple of days and I just wanted to show you how I have prepped these pages so as I mentioned I wanted to coffee dye these pages to work as a base so all I did was mixed up some instant coffee with some water and then just got a paintbrush and applied some coffee to the pages and I just really love how this looks I think it gives a really nice base especially with all the different things going on on the page so whether it's the text pages or these more plain pages especially with like the grid and I some of them I let just dry naturally and then some of them I also just dried with a hairdryer so you can see the difference between for example, when you dry things with like a heat gun or a hairdryer, you get this really nice effect where it dries. And then ones where I've let them dry more naturally, you can tell that they are a lot flatter, but then also they just create different effects. So this is the base that I am working with and the pages are super, super crinkly. So what I'm going to do is pop this under a heavy book or probably a pile of heavy books just to flatten these out and I'm just super excited to start working on this so I think the next video is probably going to be looking at the cover and also these inner pages so I'd love to maybe cover up this middle part do something with like a label because I do like this really beautiful illustration and then also work on making these inside end papers a little bit more fancy so I think maybe doing some collage just something to make these look a bit more interesting because they're just plain I know some books you buy they have like really patterned pretty end papers but these are just green so I'm going to work on altering these and then we will start with the pages inside i hope you're excited to see how this altered book is going to come along don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when there's a new video live and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys